you know, on that, it might be a good idea to stand on something soft. You know, when you stand on something hard, it puts whatever way your back wants to sink, it stays that way. But if you stay on something kind of, uh, you know, the word gooey, like a little bit yeah. uneven and rocky, then at least your muscles stay active. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm using, so it's like blue. sometimes I'm using the ball, sitting ball, the Pilates ball. Yeah, yeah. That's not bad. And then, but that like keeps your hip flexors really tight. So you have to be able to stand at some point. Because if uh, it prevents you from jumping, and that'll last for hours, that will prevent you from jumping. Hey guys, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Mark Burke, and you and I are here to get better at beach volleyball. Today, we have a different type of episode for you. So I have regular meetings with our players in our complete player program. When you're a part of our complete player program, uh, you get to meet twice a week with coaches in a group setting, but uh, we also open ourselves up to some private talks. And Stefan here had a very interesting question, and I wanted to jump on and answer it with him because it wasn't quite coming through in our private Facebook group. So we scheduled a call, and uh, this is a recording of that call. He's from Croatia, and he had a question about how many times a week he should be strength training. He had already taken our 60 day max vertical course and he was trying to do it again, but in season and had some questions about how he was supposed to time his workouts when he's playing so many times a week because Stefan plays, as you'll see, he plays uh, three times a week. So he had to know how to space out his strength and conditioning workouts because our 60 day program has a very specific schedule and we do have some videos in there that tell you how to space it out, but it is also pretty unique to have somebody who is competing in a league three separate times per week. So I hope you enjoy the episode. If you want to sign up for either our 21 day back to fitness challenge, our nutrition performance, nutrition package, which includes a tournament eating checklist in eight week challenge and a lot of keys and information on nutrition for volleyball. Or if you want to join our full 60 day max vertical program or get everything that you could possibly get with our coaches, our meetings, our private Facebook group and dig in with us and get real active custom coaching, just like he does then you can sign up for the complete player program. We're going to link all of those underneath this episode. So I hope you enjoy the show and I hope you get a lot out of it. This is for anybody who is trying to time their strength training with their practices and competitions. Enjoy. Perfect. How are you, Mark? I'm good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm on my 1,000 sites at the moment. <laughs> oh, no. What's up? Yeah, maybe my kid will... Join us also. She is in the next room. We will see how it's going okay. going to go. And yeah, as you can see, it's. Uh, I don't know if you remember me from the last year. I guess you had many Program. many students from Croatia. What city are you in again? Varaždin. Okay, I'll be quick. You saw my post. Go back to it. So remind me. Yeah, the question is how to balance season after you finish the vertical sixty day sure. max program. Yep, and. Well, I will tell you the specific situation. I was 10 days swimming, stretching, relaxing after I joined to the sand and the trainings. It was super cool. The only problem is that we are not top elite, so we are playing the games and every game has four to five sets. Wow. And I go pretty much maximum there. And after two days, I'm dropping, dropping, dropping. Sure. And now after two weeks... I'm exhausting in so way that my technique is slowing down and it's not the way I was fresh and of after these 10 days of relax or uh, I eat well mm -hmm. so let's say I have seven meals when I'm in totally training Ooh. I'm taking care so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> drinking eat BCA and uh, glutamine as well. Yeah, creatine might help a little bit too. Yeah, I'm, st <laughs> I'm still exhausted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm stretching and I'm using foam roller as well. Yeah. But I'm still not going up, but right. down. 
because this of is, the place. This is preseason for you, right? Uh, actually, it's a season now. At the moment, we are in tournament season, and it will stay until beginning of September. Okay. Something like that. And I just want to get some seven days framework with yeah. Jim and sand i'm 41 now (laughs) but i'm still in shape so i'm good with my knees and my uh, shoulder it's okay so i can live with ice (laughs) yeah (laughs) doing some ice Uh, don't don't do too much a lot of ice delays a lot of healing so yeah i know you gotta kind of find a balance like relieving discomfort versus actually healing so so tell me about your play schedule when you play your matches from five to seven that's afternoon on what days tuesday thursday and one at the weekend three saturday matches. or sunday you have three matches a week or three tournaments a week no it's not tournaments it's only the training play so four sets per, per play four sets four to five sets within two hours okay. with more like uh, a, with warming up yeah. more like a league yeah something like that yeah okay four to five sets So that's Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And these are all competitions or practices? Competitions. Okay. That's tough when they're scattered like that. Oh. That's not easy. You know? Okay. (laughs) Yeah. It's way easier to like schedule when you have one at the the end of the week and then you can really plan it on. But Mm -hmm. that's not the end of the world. So let's take a look. Monday. But I can drop it. It's, it doesn't matter if I'm on the old days because I'll rather choose health than be first in the league. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but but there's a way. It's just like these days are your jump intensive sets really isn't isn't that much. It's not crazy. No, it's not. But maybe I'm not too prepared or I'm too exhausted because yeah. I'm not on my holidays. I still have eight hours work it's in the office so i'm sitting and it's a little bit uh, hard to get from the sitting position all day now you are warmed up in the half hours so it's i don't know if you're lucky enough but are you able to get a desk that allows you to stand like i have a desk that i can press yeah, yeah. and it goes yes. okay so you know on that it might be a good idea to stand on something soft you know when you stand on something hard it puts whatever way your back wants to sink it stays that way but if you stay on something kind of, uh, you know, the word gooey, like a little bit yeah. uneven and rocky, then at least your muscles stay active. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm using, so it's like blue. sometimes I'm using the ball, sitting ball, the Pilates ball. Yeah, yeah. That's not bad. And then, but that like keeps your hip flexors really tight. So you have to be able to stand at some point because if uh-huh. you tight, it prevents you from jumping and that'll last for hours that will prevent you from jumping. And that's, that's the problem maybe. <laughs> that they're having yeah 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 you know so if you're in if you're in that position all day then you tell your body to do that it doesn't want yeah, it's, mm-hmm. so, and then forcing and then it's a problem yeah yeah you might think about if you're at a desk a, a long time like maybe 60 minutes 90 minutes something where an alarm goes off and you hear it mm-hmm. and then you go all right all right you know and then just get up and start opening yourself mm-hmm. up or something but sit in a yeah. and make sure that you actually get up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any season goals? Like, is there a championship that you really want to do well in? Something that you're leading towards? Not really. No. No. I just want to be in the good shape playing and, yeah, have a good friendship with other guys. So it's not, cool. there are no specific goals. I'm too old. I have now kids and a <laughs> wife and my job. And, yeah. <laughs> So we have to pick at minimum. We have to pick one of these days. That's a full rest day, no fit. Mm-hmm. One, yeah. maybe two. Yeah, that's okay. okay. You can walk. You know, you can stretch or do the the mobility mm-hmm. protocol. But you mm-hmm. if you can't jump, you can't sprint. Okay. Okay. So that looks like the robbers. Maybe Monday's a rest. Maybe Wednesday's a rest. Maybe Friday is a rest, and maybe Sunday is a rest. For me, a lot of my Sundays are my complete rest days. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. where I'm like, eh, I would like to work out, but I'm not allowed. I, I change it. I pay attention. It depends on the tournaments because sometimes you play longer in a tournament. Sometimes you play shorter, mm-hmm. get knocked out. Do you have time on your tournament days? Do you mm-hmm. also have time to lift. To lift. Yeah. Maybe in the morning. But early in the morning, but with the home, yeah, with the robbers, not with the 
Not with hundred kilos on my on my back. Yeah. Yeah. But you can do one legged stuff, right? And that'll be good for you. You can do some kind of landings. Let's remember, like from the the, the max vertical program, there's only twenty to thirty minutes of actual lifting in there. Yeah. So that can be short. The problem is that if you wake up and you try to lift heavy weights, you're not going to lift much, right? So you need that warm up time. So sometimes there might be an opportunity for you after you play your match, your four to five sets, mm-hmm. to go immediately get. Mm-hmm. 20 to 25 minutes of lift. Now, in that way, you're prioritizing playing over lifting because you're going to have more energy for playing and less for lifting, but you'll still be adding strength. Mm -hmm. If you're in a phase where you want to, like your main focus is getting stronger and being able to jump higher and increasing your max strength, then you would do that the 20 minutes before you play. Mm -hmm. What about the plyometric trainings and uh, explosiveness training? So you're getting that with jumping. If yeah. you're doing an hour and a half or two hours of jumping three times, mm-hmm. that is yeah. sprint, agility, and jump. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're right. Yeah, totally right. So I'm missing the lifting, right? Yeah. So I would say, you know, like even after those matches, the one thing that we don't really get to get is it feels like we do some sprint training, but you actually really want to develop some sort of sprint action. So at the end of your match, or maybe just before it, if you could work in some of the agility exercises or some of the sprint exercises on your volleyball days Mm -hmm. before you start playing or immediately after, Mm -hmm. if you can work in 10 minutes of sprint or agility training, Mm -hmm. you know know the explosiveness training, right? We we do the cone drills. You can make yourself do that for a warm up. Mm -hmm. When you're done with the practice, you make yourself do that. And again, then you go to your lift. Mm-hmm. Got a lot of jump. Then you've gotten some max speed, max agility training. And now it's mm-hmm. just time to add on the, the maximal strength, which comes from the mm-hmm. lifting part. Okay. What about the time around noon for yeah. lifting when actually I am have flexible working time and I can make a lifting training around noon? Yeah, I would do that on your volleyball days mm-hmm. because if you do two hours of jumping and sprinting, then the next day you lift two hours of jumping and sprinting. Next day you lift, you never have an opportunity to recover, and that's when you're going to feel slow, sluggish, and injury potentially might come along. Okay. And then you know, if it were a practice situation instead of a play situation, I would say, hey, on Tuesday, make sure it's just a passing and a setting practice, so you don't get all the jumps. Yeah, yeah. Then you could have a good opportunity to lift on Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. You could have the choice there. Mm-hmm. But if you're playing full for each of mm-hmm. these, then that is your plyo workout. That's your speed and mm-hmm. jump workout. So all you need to add there is 20 to 25 minutes of lifting. And you know how short the sets are. It's like yes. five sets no. of three. So it's not going to take long if you're warm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How much uh, percentage of my strength should I lift on those days when I have the play also? You can follow the program for that. It depends what phase. Like if you're if you're trying to build muscle, mm-hmm. higher reps at 70. No, no, no. I'm, I'm asking that this practice won't affect on my game in the afternoon. If I have a lifting practice at noon yeah. and in the afternoon I'm playing the game, if I go... 100% at noon on my lifting should that have the issue or should make effect on the performance in the game you might actually find yourself jumping higher oh <laughs> yeah there's, there's a nervous system potentiation or something but when you put your body under heavy weight it recruits uh-huh. more neurons your nervous system yeah so for mm-hmm. me like this tournament in florida the morning before my match, mm-hmm. I got as heavy a weight as I could, and I jumped with it three times, you know, three sets of one. Yeah. When I don't have weights, I'll find like something the height of a refrigerator, and I'll jump off mm-hmm. and I'll land. Because mm-hmm. when, remember, we're not fatiguing or ripping our muscles, mm-hmm. we're recruiting more, more fibers. So it's more of a nervous system increase than an actual physical tear and change. If you're doing eight to 12 reps in a set, mm-hmm. 
then you're really fatigued yeah, I know. your muscles and, and ripping them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the three sets of five or five sets of three, I think you'll you'll actually see an increase in your, mm-hmm. your jump and your speed that day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that will be enough to stay me on the at least on the same level. Yeah. Okay, that's good advice. <laughs> then on like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Sunday, then you can do a bunch of upper body stuff. You can do whatever you want on those days. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah. for upper body, but mm-hmm. three days a week of jumping, you're at the right spot, mm-hmm. and you shouldn't add another leg day. Yeah, around those days. Mm-hmm. Okay, got it. Yeah. Cool. Find find if you can. Find those days to either, you know, if you can't find weights, one mm-hmm. legged one legged exercises where you put your foot on a chair or a bench or something. Um mm-hmm. yeah. maybe like for me, I always carry a weight vest in my car. Two mm-hmm. weight vests. That way, if I can't find a gym when I'm traveling, I put two weight vests on and I do one legged exercises. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Pretty yeah. Nice. yeah, it's max. Yeah. Yeah. And that might be a good answer. You know, if you if you travel yeah. with a kettlebell or you travel with a heavy weight vest. And you say, mm. before my match or right after, I just have to get a few of these big jumps or a few of these, you know, like speed lunges. Mm. Yeah, I'll try it. I'll definitely try it like that. Cool. Cool. Mark, I need to go. All right, so my take care kid is waiting for me. Thank you very much. And I'll send you the feedback. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the time. Once have more. a good night. Go you right. too. Bye bye. Ciao. Hey guys, this is Mark again. I hope you enjoyed that episode and I hope you got a lot out of it. If you have any specific questions about volleyball, we have a public Facebook group. It's called Volley Chat, Get Better at Beach Volleyball. You can search for that on Facebook. And when you join, as you join that Facebook group, we're going to send you our best 36 beach volleyball drills. So it's a free drill book. All you got to do is when you sign up for that Facebook group, make sure you include your email address with us. And we have a lot of coaches, high level referees, actually quite a few high level referees who are answering goals questions. And we give lots of advice there. If you want to upgrade and you want to talk directly to our coaching staff of high level AVP, FIVP coaches and players, then you would head to betteratbeach.com forward slash coaching where you will get access to every single one of our courses, every recorded video analysis and private lesson that we have ever done, structured and titled kind of like on this podcast. And you'll be able to answer questions, film your drills at home or on the court, film your practices, film your matches and ask us real questions so that we can help you get better as fast as possible. We are also starting up a coaching program for beach volleyball club directors and coaches so that you guys can be more equipped and learn how we teach our athletes how to start a beach volleyball business, how to keep coaches organized and accountable and how to give fantastic tools for your players. So if you're interested in any of that, just make sure that you get on our email list. Remember that anybody who joins our email list gets free lessons every week. We send you out a bunch of our videos and blogs, and uh, we give you quick tips along the way. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And uh, if you really did, please go ahead, like, subscribe, share it with a friend who you think needs to hear it. And that goes a long way for us. All right. Have a great one. I'll see you on the sand.